go to the window menu and channels to display the channels panel. Once you've got that, you can see RGB, red, green, and blue. However, I want the red channel, so I can simply just select the red channel, work in the red channel. If you're using CMYK, you'll see CMYK there and cyan, magenta, etc. Obviously, I'm using RGB, so you don't see that. So with that selected, you can go down here and there's some great little functionality just down the bottom and you can load this as a selection. So the red channel becomes a selection. So click there and you can see straight away, you've got this selection. You can see all that marching ants around there. And you of course can use it in RGB, so you can see it there. However, in the red channel, what you can do, you can also go down here, the second item, and you can click there. So it adds it as an alpha channel. You can also go to selection, deselect, say go to that alpha channel, you can select that, and you could do the same with green and blue as well, perfectly reasonable as well. You've got the alpha channel there. You can always right click and you can duplicate channel. Now, because I want to keep that selection, so click OK. And you can see now I've got alpha copy there. What I can do, I can go to filter, maybe blur, Gaussian blur. So I can blur and it's blurring the channel, not the image just blurring that alpha channel, blurring the selection. So you can then go to RGB and then go to select and load selection. Now you can of course load the selection over on the side. However, in the panel itself, load selection offers a few more bits of functionality. I don't know why it doesn't in there, but it doesn't. New selection, so you've got that. So I'm just gonna use the one that I've blurred. So you can see you've got two channels there, two channels there, alpha channel, click OK. And you've got your selection. Now what you can do with the selections, of course, you can always go to select, you can apply various things, modify them. You can also transform selections. So just transfer selection, move it around, that selection there, just gonna leave it there. What I can now do, I can actually add that as well. So I can go down here, I can save that selection. So I've just transformed it. So it's saved and you can see it saved there. But also what I can do, I can go up here and select again, load selection, load selection, and I can go to this one. So alpha two, alpha one, I can use one of those, maybe the alpha two, use that. Alpha cop, yeah, obviously that would be more sensible. Go for add to selection. So click there, add to selection, or I could subtract. So click there. And you can see now that one is added to the other one. So you've got a much more complex selection. But of course what you can do, you can go to select and down again to load selection. And you can go here to subtract from selection. Again, make certain you select the right one because quite often I don't, I go and select the wrong one. Now I want that one, which is the first one. As you can see the original one from the red channel. You can see there, click OK. And you can subtract it so you can reduce, you can create very complex selections. Maybe too complex <laughs> sometimes. You don't know what I'm gonna, really don't know what I'm gonna get in the end. However, once you've done that, go back obviously to RGB, you can then use it. Maybe go and apply effects. So filter and say blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it, just using that selection. And you can, of course, create a whole range of different designs. So you've got that blurred effect, sort of misty effect that you've applied over there. However, what you can also do is you can go down here. There's another option, the third option. So click there, and you've got that white one. It's just white, completely empty channel. I don't know how many channels you can add out channel. I'm certain there's a limit. 100, 500, I do not know. Maybe someone could put in the comments below. Maybe it's a 1,000. So you can add again. You can also, of course, right click and duplicate or delete if you wish. So you can duplicate. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Got a couple there. Now what you can do, just go and add, say, a gradient. Create a quick gradient, very simple design like that, say. Again, go up here. And you, of course, can go do exact same. So select, load selection. And this time, of course, it's you can rename them as well. I haven't been renaming them, so alpha three, whatever can be turned into whatever you want. So you can just so use that one and just select it, click OK, and just use warning, no pixels selected. Ah, alpha three, that was that one. Does require something to be in it. If it done, it will pop up with that message. So select, good old Photoshop, loves warning you. Just instead of not doing anything, it does warn you. So select three, that's what I want. So got that selection now, and it's using that one. So you can see that there. And again, you can do exactly the same as before. Say so maybe select, modify, maybe smooth, expand, contract, feather, whatever. Whole range of them, click OK. And you can see you can modify that. And then, of course, you can still do exactly the same. You can save it. So this selection with that feather now, you can just save it. Just click there, that one. 
go that one, not the plus. So you can see you've got obviously a slightly more harder to see actually one. However, you can also go to this one and you've got that selection there. I don't want that anymore. So select and deselect. And again, maybe this time use a brush stroke. So I'm just going to quickly do a random squiggle over the image as you do. And you got that. Well, you can put all kinds of information into it. You can put text into it. You could put shapes into it. You could put a whole range of things. You could have loads of these if you want to build up a complex design for complex selections. So again, go back to RGB and again, simply go to select, load selection. And because I don't rename all these things, sometimes I have to look and check that I'm actually using, yes, Alpha 3 copy. That's the one with the squiggle. Click OK. And you can see now you've got your selection very quickly from that brush stroke. And of course, what you can do then, you can do other things. You can apply gradients to it, copy and paste, and so on. You can see the effect there. Whole range of things. I'm not certain you would want to do that, but however, just to show that you can from the selection. And you've got a whole range of these things, and you can just maybe create 50 or 60. Please put in the comments below if someone knows how many selection channels you can have. It'd be great to know. Well, hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.